The theory of functions of several complex variables is the branch of mathematics dealing with complex valued functions f z 1 z 2 z n Display style f z underscore one z underscore two l dots z underscore n on the space C n of n tuples of complex numbers. As in complex analysis, which is the case n equals one but of a distinct character, these are not just any functions, they are supposed to be holomorphic or complex analytic, so that locally speaking they are power series in the variables z. Equivalently, as it turns out, they are locally uniform limits of polynomials, or local solutions to the n-dimensional Cauchy-Riemann equations. Historical perspective Many examples of such functions were familiar in 19th century mathematics, abelian functions, theta functions, and some hypergeometric series. Naturally also any function of one variable that depends on some complex parameter is a candidate. The theory, however, for many years didn't become a full-fledged area in mathematical analysis, since its characteristic phenomena weren't uncovered. The Weierstrass preparation theorem would now be classed as commutative algebra, it did justify the local picture, ramification, that addresses the generalization of the branch points of Riemann surface theory. With work of Friedrich Hartig's, and of Kiyoshi Oka in the 1930s, a general theory began to emerge. Others working in the area at the time were Heinrich Benke, Peter Thullen, and Karl Stein. Hartig's proved some basic results, such as every isolated singularity is removable, for any analytic function f c n. C display style f math bf c caret n long right arrow math bf c whenever n greater than one. Naturally, the analogs of contour integrals will be harder to handle when n equals two. An integral surrounding a point should be over a three-dimensional manifold, since we are in four real dimensions. While iterating contour line integrals over two separate complex variables should come to a double integral over a two-dimensional surface. This means that the residue calculus will have to take a very different character. After 1945 important work in France, in the seminar of Henri Carton, and Germany with Hans Grauert and Reinhold Remmert, quickly changed the picture of the theory. A number of issues were clarified, in particular that of analytic continuation. Here a major difference is evident from the one variable theory, while for any open connected set D in C we can find a function that will nowhere continue analytically over the boundary, that cannot be said for n greater than 1. In fact the D of that kind are rather special in nature a condition called pseudoconvexity. The natural domains of definition of functions, continued to the limit, are called Stein manifolds and their nature was to make sheaf cohomology groups vanish. In fact it was the need to put in particular, the work of Oka on a clearer basis that led quickly to the consistent use of sheaves for the formulation of the theory with major repercussions for algebraic geometry, in particular from Grauert's work. 
From this point onwards there was a foundational theory, which could be applied to analytic geometry a name adopted, confusingly, for the geometry of zeros of analytic functions. This is not the analytic geometry learned at school, automorphic forms of several variables, and partial differential equations. The deformation theory of complex structures and complex manifolds was described in general terms by Kunihiko Kadaira and D. C. Spencer. The celebrated paper Gaga of Serre pinned down the crossover point from géométrie analytique to géométrie algébrique. C. L. Siegel was heard to complain that the new theory of functions of several complex variables had few functions in it, meaning that the special function side of the theory was subordinated to sheaves. The interest for number theory, certainly, is in specific generalizations of modular forms. The classical candidates are the Hilbert modular forms and Siegel modular forms. These days these are associated to algebraic groups respectively the Weyl restriction from a totally real number field of GL2, and the symplectic group, for which it happens that automorphic representations can be derived from analytic functions. In a sense this doesn't contradict Siegel, the modern theory has its own, different directions. Subsequent developments included the hyperfunction theory, and the edge of the wedge theorem, both of which had some inspiration from quantum field theory. There are a number of other fields, such as Banach algebra theory, that draw on several complex variables. <laughs> Holomorphic functions. A function f z display style f z defined on a domain u c n display style u subset math b c caret n is called holomorphic if f z Display style f z satisfies one of the following two conditions. I for each point a equals a one a n element of u c n Display style a equals a caret one dots a caret n in U subset math b c caret n f z display style f z is expressed as a power series expansion that is convergent on U display style U which was the origin of Weierstrass analytic methods. E if f z display style f z is continuous on u display style u, and for each variable z lambda. Display style z caret lambda f z display style f z is holomorphic, namely, which is a generalization of the Cauchy-Riemann equations using a partial Wertinger derivative, and has the origin of Riemann's differential equation methods using Hartog's extension theorem. Continuity in E is not necessary. For each index lambda, let z lambda equals x lambda plus i y 
lambda f z 1 z n equals u x 1 x n y 1 y n plus i v x 1 x n y 1 y n Display style z caret lambda equals x caret lambda plus i y caret lambda quad f z caret one dots z caret n equals u x caret one dots x caret n y caret one dots y caret n plus i v x caret one dots x caret n y caret one dots y caret n and generalize the usual Cauchy Riemann equation for one variable for each index lambda, then we obtain let d z lambda equals d x lambda plus i d y lambda d z lambda equals d x lambda minus i d y lambda z lambda equals 1 2 x lambda minus i y lambda z lambda equals 1 2 x lambda plus i y lambda display style begin align ed dz caret lambda and equals dx caret lambda plus id caret lambda and d bar z caret lambda and equals dx caret lambda i d y caret lambda frac partial partial z caret lambda and equals frac one two biggle frac partial partial x caret lambda i frac Partial partial y caret lambda bigger and frac partial partial bar z caret lambda and equals frac one two bigel frac partial partial x caret lambda plus i frac partial partial y caret lambda bigger end aligned through re fz lambda equals u x lambda minus v y lambda equals zero I'm F Z lambda equals U Y lambda plus V X lambda equals zero Display style text re bigel frac partial f partial bar z caret lambda bigger equals frac partial u partial x caret lambda frac partial v partial y caret lambda equals zero text I'm bigel frac partial f partial bar z caret lambda bigger equals frac 
partial u partial y caret lambda plus frac partial v partial x caret lambda equals zero. The above equations two and three turn to be equivalent. To show that above two conditions I and E are equivalent, it is easy to prove I E. To prove E I, one uses Cauchy's integral formula on the n-multiple disk for several complex variables, and then estimates the coefficients of the power series expansion. C K one K N display style C underscore K underscore one dots K underscore N in one. While in one variable case the Cauchy's integral formula is an integral over the circumference of a disk with some radius r, in several variables case over the surface of a multiple disk with radii r i displaystyle r underscore i s as in 4 as same as the one variable case, the identity theorem holds due to the properties of Laurent series that hold in several variable case. Let G one G two C Display style G underscore one G underscore two subset Math B C be some domains G one G two Display style G underscore one cap G underscore two connected F one Display style F underscore one and F two Display style F underscore two holomorphic functions on G one G two Display style G underscore one G underscore two respectively and z 0 equals x 0 plus i y 0 element of g 1 g 2 Display style z caret zero equals x caret zero plus i y caret zero in g underscore one cap g underscore two. If f one equals f two, display style f underscore one equals f underscore two on z z j minus z j zero r j y equals y zero one j n display style z b i g l z underscore j z underscore j caret zero. There is then a unique holomorphic function f display style f on G one G two display style G underscore one cup G underscore two such that F equals F one display style F equals F underscore one on G one display style G underscore one and F equals F two display style F equals F underscore two on G Two display style g underscore two. Therefore, Liouville's theorem for entire functions and the maximal principal hold for several variables. Also, the inverse function theorem and implicit function theorem hold as in the one variable case. Topic. 
An example on analytic continuation As described in the previous there are similar results in several variables case as one variable case. However, there are very different aspects in several variable case. For example, Riemann mapping theorem, mittig lefler's theorem, Weierstrass theorem, Runge's theorem and so on cannot apply to the several variables case as it is in one variable case. The following example of analytic continuation in two variables shows these differences, which was one of motivations to complex analysis in several variables. In several variables analytic continuation is defined in the same way as in one variable case. Namely, let u v display style u v be open subsets in c n display style math b c caret n f element of o u display style f in math call o u and G element of O V display style G in math call O V. Assume that U V does not equal display style U cap V n e q var nothing and W Display style W is a connected component of U V. Display style U cap V. If F W equals G W display style F underscore W equals G underscore W, then H display style H is defined as H Z equals F Z Z element of U G Z Z element of V. Display style H Z equals begin cases F Z and Z in U G Z and Z in V end cases the above H display style H is called analytic continuation of F display style F or G display style G. Note that H display style H is uniquely determined by the identity theorem, but may be multi-valued. In one variable case, n equals one. Display style n equals one. For any open domain, u c. Display style u var subset neck math b c. There is a holomorphic function f. Display style f on u display style u that cannot be analytically continued beyond u display style u. This is because for any a element of u display style a in partial u f equals 1 z minus a display style f equals frac 1 z a cannot be analytically continued beyond a display style a however in case of several variables n 2 display style n geq 2 it can occur that there exists a strictly larger open domain u tilde u 
Display style wide tiled U varsip setnik U such that all F element of O U display style F in math call O U can be analytically continued to F tilde element of U tilde display style tilde f in wide tiled u this phenomenon is called hartog's phenomenon topic the cn space the simplest stein manifold is the space cn the complex n space which consists of n tuples of complex numbers it can be considered as an n-dimensional vector space over complex numbers, which gives its dimension 2n over r hence, as a set, and as topological space, cn is identical to r2n and its topological dimension is 2n. In coordinate free language, any vector space over complex numbers may be thought of as a real vector space of twice dimensions, where a complex structure is specified with a linear operator J such that J2 equals minus I, which defines the multiplication to the imaginary unit I. Any such space, as a real space, is oriented. On the complex plane thought of as the Cartesian plane, multiplication to a complex number W equals U plus IV has the real matrix, U minus V V U, display style begin P matrix U and and V V and and U end P matrix, a 2 times 2 real matrix that has the determinant U2 plus V2 equals W. 2 display style u caret 2 plus v caret 2 equals w caret 2 likewise if one expresses any finite dimensional complex linear operator as a real matrix which will be composed from 2 times 2 blocks of the aforementioned form then its determinant equals to the square of absolute value of the corresponding complex determinant it is a non-negative number, which implies that the real orientation of the space is never reversed by a complex operator. The same applies to Jacobians of holomorphic functions from Cn to Cn. Topic. See also. Coherent sheaf. Cartan's theorems A and B Cousin problems Hartog's lemma Hartog's theorem Baholomorphism Domain of holomorphy Complex geometry Complex projective space Several real variables Harmonic maps Harmonic morphisms equals equals footnotes. <laughs>